Hey there, welcome to Getting It Done North of the 7. Today we're going to be changing the flywheel on the Suzuki Iger 400. It's a 2004, and I'm going to tell you what led me to this discovery. So since last winter, this Suzuki's been acting up. I've had this Suzuki for three years, and it's been really good. It's been running well. Like I said, I bought it used. It's a 2004. Until last year. And I've been chasing a problem. First, I changed the petcock, and then I had trouble with it clicking when I'm starting, start trying to start it. Now, this was a totally different issue. It was the brushes on the starter were wore out, so I changed those. I had the carburetor off twice. The first time, cleaned it all out, did everything we could do, put it back together, it was fine. And then I was talking to a friend. He said it could be the diaphragm inside the carburetor, so I went. I took the carburetor back out, had another look. The diaphragm was ripped. I know that the first time it wasn't ripped, it was fine, but this time it was ripped, so I changed that. And you know what? Everything started working good. And about a week later, as it got a little bit colder, it started to become hard to start again. And then I would take it out, and it wasn't quite warmed up yet. Just take off cold, go up the driveway, get the other driveway to turn around, and it would shut off just like the original problem from the very beginning one year ago. So since then, that was just a few days ago, I never bothered with it. Yesterday, I thought we'll try it today. I adjusted the fuel air mixture, the screw underneath the carburetor. I turned it about an eighth of a turn, put on the choke, fired right up instantly. And I'm thinking, okay, this is good, right? The ATV is running and I got the choke fully on. So I wanna cut the choke back off right as it's warming up. So I, I cut it back a little bit, it's fine, come back a little bit more, bleh, it stalls. Go to turn it over again, you know, it's turning over, and all of a sudden I hear something drop, like something move inside the engine. It's still turning over, but now it's got a weird sound. So I'm thinking, okay, I think I know what it is. And what led me to thinking I know what it might be this time, is over the last few days I've been getting comments from a viewer and he was telling me about this issue 2004 Suzuki Igers have. And he, he said he just bought a 2004 Suzuki Iger. And he was having issues. And he had been watching videos. And he heard that in 2004, the Suzuki Iger, inside the flywheel, there are magnets that were glued on. And I guess it was a consistently faulty thing with, two, with Suzuki Igers back then. And what they do is the glue comes loose and they slip. They may move. They may they may move like this way or that way, and they may fall off too. So as he's telling me this over the last couple of days, this is on this is on my mind. I'm thinking, what he's telling me his Suzuki Iger was doing, it's the same thing that's going on with this. So I'm thinking, okay, I've been you know I I'm I'm looking into I'm thinking about this. And then when we go to start this again for the last time yesterday and I hear that noise down in this area on the left side of the engine where the flywheel is, I'm thinking that's got to be it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this side of the engine off and we're going to go inside and look. Now I'm hoping it didn't hurt the stator. When the magnet slipped, it didn't rub up against the stator or wreck anything there because that'll just cost me more money. But if it if it is, I have to fix it. I have to replace it. So let's get started. So we're looking at the left side of the engine here. The flywheel is inside here behind this, behind this cover here. So I have to take this off. I have to disconnect all kinds of things, shift cables and speedometer and, and gear shifter. And I got to drain the oil out, unhook the oil line. All kinds of things has to come apart here. I've already taken off the plastic, uh, whatever you call this here. The fenders, the siding here. I took all that plastic siding off of here. So this is going to be a bit of a big job. I know to take the flywheel off, once I get this off of here, once I go to take the flywheel off, I'm going to need a puller. And I have found parts online where you can get the flywheel and you get that puller together and you get the gasket that goes around here and you get it all in one kit. But I want to check the stator before I order that kit because I may have to get a stator as well. So, so the first thing we're going to do is drain the motor oil. 
All right, so what I did is I took the recoil off. Then you have this cup here, and there's a nut under here. It's a 14 mil. You have to undo that to get this cup off. So what I did was I put a crowbar here, just put it inside these slots here, and just uh, block it from, you gotta stop this from turning, because when you turn this bolt, the whole crankshaft's gonna wanna turn. So you have to stop it from turning to get that bolt off. I think I got it. Yep, I got it. So take this out of here. Just enough to crack that nut, right? So take that off. So now that the nut is off, you should be able to walk this right off of here. Yeah, see, it's just got splines here. So you just have to pull straight off. It may, may be a little hard for just wiggle it, it'll come. Okay, so I unhooked the shifter cable. I unhooked the, the gear shift linkage. I also unhooked the speedometer. Now I'm unhooking the oil line over here. And I have, uh, actually these are Allen keys, number five. And I've loosened them off, taken one out. I'm just taking out the other one. I put some paper towel there to catch any oil that may run out. But we got a whole bunch of, uh, I would say they're eight millimeter bolts. I'll check, maybe 10. Oh, they're eight. So there's probably, geez, 10 around there anyway. Have to undo every one of them and then slowly pull off that side cover very carefully. Well, guys, I got the cover off, as you can see. And right here, right there in that hole, there was a bolt. And that had to come out first. I quickly rediscovered that, but uh, I didn't even see that bolt at first. And I watched another video, and I didn't see the uh, person on the video take that bolt out. So, yeah, right there, at least on the 2004 Suzuki Iger. Where is it? Right in that hole, right. I can't do it with two hands. Right, do you see two holes? It's the one on the bottom. So, the cover came off, and in fact... The magnets that go on the inside of the, see these magnets? See all the epoxy stuck to the sides? So the magnets that go inside this flywheel, they stick to the insides of here. They were all off. Every single magnet had come off. So that's definitely a problem. And this could have been, this could be the result of all my problems so far. Also. When you take the cover off of here, off the side of your motor, some of these gears and other things, little washers and spacers, they'll fall out. There's nothing you can do. You gotta be careful, but there's really nothing you can do if they drag out and fall off. What I did was, is I went online and I searched for a diagram of this whole part here, all the gears and everything on this side of the engine. And it pretty much shows me where everything goes back one thing I forgot to mention, I want to let you know, when you order the flywheel, I bought it off of eBay. When you order the flywheel, it comes with the puller as well. Because right here, you're going to need a puller, like you're going to undo this nut. You're going to need a puller to pull this flywheel off. So it comes with the puller, and it also comes with the gasket that you're going to need to go around the perimeter of this cover. And you're going to need a gasket right here where your uh, speedometer goes. Speedometer hookup goes right there. You're going to need a gasket for there. I didn't see it with the kit that I bought. So actually I have my own gasket material. I'm going to make a gasket. All right, now we, uh, we have to take this nut off of here in order to fit the puller onto the shaft here so we can pull the flywheel off. Whoops. There, the nut came off. No problem with an impact gun. Okay, so now we have to put this puller onto the shaft. It has threads in here. Just put it on there like this. And you don't want to crank it tight because probably the shaft is hitting against the inside of this puller. So we're just going to back it off like one turn. 
Then we'll put this other part of the puller onto these threads here that are on the flywheel. You want to put it on all the way. And we'll crank the inside of this, what do you call this? We'll, we'll tighten this bolt up until it hits the part of the puller on the inside, on the end of the shaft. And we'll just tighten this up and it should pull this off. Okay, the flywheel popped off, so we'll just back off the puller and we'll pull the flywheel off the shaft. That puller is a really cool tool, it works great. I like that. No, you need, you need those. There we go. So what we did was we took, there was some uh, bolts six bolts back here holding the clutch to the flywheel so we have to take the clutch off and attach it to the new flywheel now these bolts are pretty hard to get off so we used an impact gun and i believe it's like a six millimeter allen key socket so what we did was we put the old clutch on the back side of this flywheel now we're going to put the bolts back in now we're going to put some uh, loctite on these bolts so they never back out you don't want that backing out and then we'll tighten them up good and uh, the flywheel will be ready to put back onto the ATV motor so okay now we're gonna put the flywheel back onto the shaft and you just want to place it in there till it slips into its spot there is a keyway yeah. there we go there perfect <laughs> All right, we got the flywheel back on and we tighten this nut up to 101 foot-pounds. All right, we went ahead and put the whole um, engine cover, the side back on, put the gasket on in place, first of all, and then put the cover on. And then we put the pull cord back in place, um, went ahead and put the gear shift on, put the speedometer cable back on, put the forward reverse cable back on to the changer here everything's in place hooked up our electrical connections again and i already fired it up it works great like it hasn't worked this good in a long time and i'll show you right now If you guys want to watch other good ATV fixes for the Suzuki Iger, I have a playlist for ATV do-it-yourself repairs and I have about three or four videos there where I fix certain things like the petcock, um, I fix the carburetor, things like that. Um, you'll find those repairs in, those, in that playlist. I'll leave a link below down in the description where you can find those. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps you out. And we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Take care.